throw a coffee pour over. I use 550 grams for this. Um, and I, I'm not sure if I've talked about this on a video, I've definitely posted on Instagram. But it wasn't too long ago that I found out um, what the, well, I mean, this is someone's take on it at least. I don't know how everyone else is using the terms. But the difference between a pour over and a coffee dripper. And basically, a pour over would be something like um, the V60, which you can get in plastic and glass, which is what I sort of use as a basis for mine, which has a big hole in the bottom. And the idea is that you control the thickness of the grind of your coffee, and that determines how quickly the water passes through, and therefore your brew time. So if you want a longer brew, you use a finer grinder coffee, and if you want a faster brew, you use a coarser one. Um, but in order to do that, you have to be able to control the grind of your coffee. And obviously some people buy it pre-ground at a certain size, and if that size works for you, great, and if it doesn't, there's nothing you can do to fix it, which is where the drippers make more sense. Um, they have a much smaller hole at the bottom and the rate that the coffee can come through is limited by the design of the piece rather than the coffee. So you can use any coarseness of coffee and it will still come through at roughly the same rate, kind of within reason. Um, and uh, so all you do different from a throwing point of view is I'm about to open the clay all the way to the bottom, which leaves a finger-sized hole through, which obviously is a very fast flow of coffee. If you didn't want to do that, you would just leave a normal base thickness of clay and um, cut holes in it, either drill them or, or use a tube cutter or something like that, um, but make smaller holes later in the trimming stage or I suppose you could do what I just did but open it smaller or open it and close it again but you're looking for a smaller hole so this is a pour over not a dripper and that's the difference between the two um, and you've kind of seen how I do them in the processes already centre the clay open it wide and then separate it out into what's going to be the base of the piece and what's going to be the cone and essentially you're almost throwing the cone part like you're throwing it off the hump but what you're in fact throwing it off is the flattened base bit of clay um, there is these are relatively technical as far as pieces go just because like throwing off the hump you've got to be careful not to lean too heavily on the clay beneath it and not to do anything too heavy handed on the clay that you're working on because it's all connected you're trying to get this part thin staying centered on a small base without talking the clay and twisting um, fun challenge Uh, there was a period about six months ago where probably I was, well, maybe making five or six a week and then I haven't made one in months I guess run up to Christmas people want coffee it's too warm at the moment don't really know but um Yes, this is the first one I've thrown in a while. So it's going to become a nautilus. So depending on what I'm doing at this stage, I can make them swirly, in which case I'll add the swirls now. I can do stamp designs like pebble or peacock, um, in which case what I would do is rib the inside smooth and leave it until tomorrow when I'd stamp it. Uh, with the Nautilus I could just leave it as it was but I will still get some of the slip off the inside. Just 
make sure it dries a bit better. The other thing with these is, I don't know how big a difference it makes, but um, the commercial ones tend to have a raised profile of some sort on the inside. So all those designs I just said, the stamped ones, they have indents from the stamping. The Nautilus has um, the raised slip ridges and swirly, obviously, the swirls give it a depth. In all cases, it's to hold the filter paper slightly away from the clay. Um, and that lets the coffee flow down a bit better. And I'm not 100% certain. I've read what it's supposed to do and apparently it does, but people who know far more about this than me. Essentially, it improves the taste because it changes the way the coffee can run down outside the paper and doesn't overbrew or something like that. do is leave that overnight phantom up still on the bat insert then I'll do the Nautilus slip and then I'll wire off. You've got to be careful not to leave them too long because the bottom will warp slightly if they're too dry when you try and put a wire underneath but at the same time for the Nautilus you want it still attached when you do the slip. So I won't let it dry too much but let's firm up slightly before I do that and then wire off. And the good thing with having this slightly raised kick, it's a bit like a bowl. It gets a lot more strength from that than it would if it was completely flat. It'd be far more prone to warping.